Hello, and welcome to another in our fibers and fabric series. This video is going to be talking about types of fabric construction. If you haven't seen our introduction on fibers and fabrics, I'd recommend watching that first to give you the foundational knowledge um, to understand this film. Let's jump in. So how is fabric made? Well, there are a range of types of fabrics and they're made in a few different ways. So three main construction types. And when we refer to the word construction, we mean how the fabric was made. So we have woven, we have knit, and we have non-woven fabrics. Good question. What is a woven fabric? Let's have a look. So this is a woven fabric and a woven fabric is made up of a grid of fibers uh, broken up. Um, we might call them yarns, for example, uh, broken up into two directions. First, we have our warp. Now our warp runs uh, the length of the loom. So woven fabrics are primarily produced on a loom and think about it as like a, a frame um, that the yarn is stretched across and then uh, woven. So the warp thread is the thread that denotes the length of the fabric. And I'll have a look at that in a second. You can see here's our warp thread here in the purple. And this provides a strong framework uh, and the length of the fabric. So if you ever buy, say, two meters of fabric, well, it's the two meters, um, which is the warp thread. Now, fabric, of course, is produced in massive, massive quantities, thousands and thousands of meters. So on industrial scale, the warp um, threads or the warp yarns are very, very long. Now, running perpendicular to this at 90 degrees, we have our weft thread. Now, our weft thread is used to create the body of the fabric. Now, sometimes if you uh, read in different sources, it might be called the filling thread. Um, but for the purposes of our conversation, we'll call it the weft. And here it is in blue. And that will give you the width of fabric. If you see here where my uh, yellow arrows are, uh, my yellow arrows, my blue arrows are, um, they, those uh, loops where the weft thread turns back on itself, that edge is called the selvedge. And you'll find it uh, on both sides of the fabric. And that is a really easy to tell, uh, easy, easy way to tell where your fabric edge is. Now, when we're talking about um, fabric identification, we often talk about grain. So the grain will most often, almost always in fact, run um, with the warp thread. So a simple way yeah, is to find the selvedge, and you can see uh, it's easy enough to see, um, on this diagram at least, and um, go 90 degrees from that to give you your grain. And you can see here's a very simple uh, loom, and you can see of course our warp and our weft there. Let's talk about plain weave. So we're about to talk about all the different kinds of woven fabric or the main types of uh, woven fabric. And you can see our warp and our weft there. So plain weave is simple, simple to create. It's the most common weave. It's very inexpensive and it's fairly durable. And you can see that it's one over one under, very simple. Um, it's flat and tight. So depending on the fiber width, thinner fibers equal tighter weave. Um, it's great for printing and you can, um, you know, many, many co common fabrics such as uh, poplin and broadcloth are produced using a plain weave. Next we have basket weave and you can see here two uh, or more warp weaves simultaneously interlaced with one or more weft. So you can see over two, under two, over two, under two um, uh, using our uh, warp and our weft. And you that gives us a basket like appearance. So it's a variation on plain weave because it uses two um, threads or two yarns instead of one. Uh, and it's ex inexpensive but less durable than plain because the gaps between the weave uh, are larger than they are for plain. So that it means that as uh, it's on the body, for example, it moves around and the gaps become, you know, looser and looser and looser and looser. And therefore the threads become thinner and thinner and thinner because they're braided against each other and they, they, can, um, they can wear through. Uh, and there's some common fabrics here like Oxford that use basket weave. Next we have a twill weave and uh, you can see here that we have our warp and our weft. They float across a few and then under a few and it creates almost like a brick wall style pattern where the gap of one is uh, gap of left by one weft uh, yarn is overcome by another uh, weft yarn. And you can see it creates a zigzag -like, zig like pattern and you can see that running from top left to the bottom right there, there's gonna zigzags. It's very strong and durable, creates a diagonal pattern. It's got a better drape than plain weave because of the way that the fabric is uh, is woven. Uh, it creates a bit of a surface texture and you can see denim, uh, tweed, gabardine, things like that. Not all denim uses a twill weave, not all twill weaves are denim, so it's important to know uh, the difference. But very, very hard wearing, very strong, so used a lot in things like workwear. 
Next we have our herringbone and you can see that um, we have these almost um, there's a zigzag effect again, but you can see almost like these little points running up and down. Um, down. They look like a herringbone. But for those of you who've never seen the herringbone, like myself, being a vegan, you'll see, if I move my mouse here, this uh, in the black, this point, this point, you know, and in the white on this side, this point, and this point running up you know, from the kind of central spine type thing. It's a variation of twill and it creates a surface pattern. Often uh, it'll be created using contrast um, colored thread. So you'll get um, a very kind of aesthetically pleasing pattern out of there. And you'll find it in wall suiting and blankets because it is very strong. It creates lots of air pockets. So you can see lots and lots and lots of uh, weaving here, not big gaps like we have saying some like basket weave. And the small gaps um, not only create a very strong um, uh, surface, but also lots of uh, lots of space for air to get trapped. So in things like wool clothing and wool suiting, especially, um, it will mould around the body, but also keep the body very warm. Let's talk about satin weave here. Here we go. So floats one or more uh, yarn um, over four or more wefts, then tied down with one thread, resulting in a smooth face. Okay. Now for me, that's fairly confusing. But if we take a look at the pattern, um, at the image, what we can see here is there a lot of warp threads left um, over the top and then uh, very few um, web threads over the top. Now what this means is that this is a warped face satin weave and that means that we see more of the warp thread. So that gives us a shinier uh, surface than say something like a twill weave where we, we don't see as many of the one thread. So it can be smooth and soft, it drapes easily, it snags easily because of the, um, the type of weave. You can see lots of areas here, lots of threads here able to be snagged. Uh, it's flat and tight um, because of the way it's woven. And there's a range of fabrics using um, filament yarn such as silk and polyester. So when we say satin weave, we mean it using a filament yarn. So a silk is a filament because it's a, it's a single yarn, not a wo not a not a kind of um, cellulose kind of woven yarn, something like cotton, uh, and polyester of course, which is a filament. Now let's talk about sateen weave. Now sateen with two e's is made in the same way. It has almost all the same properties, but it's using spun yarns such as cotton and linen. So very slightly different uh, wording there, but very similar fabrics. So it's important to know the difference. Oh, crikey, what is a pile fabric? So, while we're talking woven fabrics, let's talk variations thereof. And one we have is a pile fabric. And you can see here a pile fabric is basically a woven fabric with supplementary fibers put into it. Now you'll find lots and lots of lots of different types of woven fa fabric with lots of different supplementary yarns. Um, but let's get into the most basic one. And here we have pile. So if we look at our fabric here, you can see our dark um, uh, lines here are our warp and our lighter lines here are our weft and you can see this is using two weft threads which um, go under and over the warp yarns. Now in this kind of net or framework um, pile fabrics are woven in and out um, in a three-dimensional way um, through that membrane or through that kind of grid created by the warp and weft yarn. Now this creates a bit of a surface and you can see the creation of textured surface. So the f we're going to talk about two different types of pile yarn. The first one is an uncut or loop pile. Um, and it's a planar twill weave with a third dimension. So we can see again here, this might be our warp. And these are our weft and our we've got our pile weave, um, our loop woven in and out. It can be really plush, very absorbent and very luxurious. So things are things like temi, oh, terry toweling is very much very common pile weave. Now that is using a kind of looped pile weave and you'll see it in things like towels as well um, because it creates a lot of surface area um, and is very absorbent then because there's lots of more lots more surface areas to come in contact with say the body if you're drawing yourself off for example. Now a cut pile is the exact same as a loop pile except the top of the loop have been cut so it gives you a kind of bushy surface. Now what that does is it creates a nap now a nappy is kind of a textured surface on a piece of fabric that has one way. Um, so that means that um, nap has very specific characteristics. You'll often find it in things like leather, for example, or suede, I should say. Um, now that has a naturally occurring nap, but pile, cut pile fabrics will have a, a nap that has been created. Things like velvet, corduroy, um, velveteen, and carpeting. Uh, again, absorbent, very lustrous. Now, 
often you might see let's say you buy a garment uh, you know a kind of low quality garment for example and you see that um like i say it's a pair of corduroy trousers which we all know and love and one leg might look lighter or darker than the other leg that's probably because the nap is being cut the wrong way so when you cut your fabric or when you use a pile of fabric it's very important that you make sure that the garment is is following the same pathway um, for the nap what is knit fabric okay here we go let's jump into it this is what a knit fabric looks like well this is a type of knit fabric anyway and you can see that we have rows um, and that denote that denotes the kind of width of the fabric and then we have loops which denote the length of the fabric this is a weft knit uh, fabric so a weft knit is where uh, a weft knit is where loops are formed as the yarn is added to, in a crosswise direction so think our weft is moving across um, and that's what we're doing you can see how those loops are connected uh, across the fabric there each one creating a loop for the next loop to go through so this is the most common type of knit it's very easy to drape and it has mechanical stretch because of all the gaps created now you can see each one of these fibers is not straight so because they're so curved they will stretch they can stretch out to straight so that's what makes knit fabric perfect for um, clothes that require lots of movement and lots of stretch unfortunately um, it can fray easily you'll see this uh, commonly in things like jersey so lots of t-shirts that type of stuff um, and um, interlock next we have uh, a warp fabric now you can see a warp knit fabric see that the uh, knit is created using that warp thread as opposed to the weft thread that we saw on the last one um, and it grows that way it grows from from top to bottom from through by lengthwise it is really run resistant it drapes very easily it's got a strong one way stretch now that's important if you can see this will stretch this way but not this way so great for something requiring stretch one way but not in the other it's very easy to sew and you're sitting tricot crochet you know tulle lots of different um knit fabrics interesting enough warp knit knit technologies are being used a lot in the medical field to create um things like prosthesis or supports that stretch one way but not another so you know, kind of, again interesting uses for fabric and 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 fibers beyond our traditional fashion system what is a non-woven fabric well this is probably the most common one you've seen uh recently now non-woven fabrics have been used extensively during the COVID 19 pa pandemic um let's have a look so they're made from short and long fibers bonded together by chemical mechanical heat or solvent treatment they often lack strength they're very simple to make they hold structure well they have multiple applications and they support other types of fabric we can see things like interfacing cleaning cloth surgical masks dressings and filters now um one thing that we've seen a lot of during COVID 19 is what we call, might call the n95 mask or the n95 filters and it's the kind of common um filter mask that you're used to seeing now the very structure of the fabric is what the filtration uh, it creates the filtration i see from this image here you can see these little square things now look at all those fibers now they're all spun and sprayed and put on in a range of different ways now all the little gaps in those fibers they're the thing that traps all the particulates and all the kind of chemicals and all the bits floating in the air that aren't good for us so they make excellent filters not only from fabrics the most common one you might encounter is felt now felt is a can be made out of many different uh protein based or hair based fibers so um sheep's wool is the most common but it can make things from human hair dog hair alpaca you know anything that have those scales that we looked at in our fiber video and the scales will interlock and kind of lock together but they will only lock together when heat moisture agitation or pressure are applied um, to create to to make them interlock permanently and you can see here that we have um, our layers of uh, wool going one way uh, and then a layer of wool going the other way now this is to create most um kind of uh, connection between the interlocking areas on the surface so we might lay a, set, a first layer of wool um, um, say left to right and then up and down for the second and then left to right again for the third this should give us enough coverage to create felt and this is our end product something like this now of course um, those of you who've made felt at home it doesn't really look like this but in industrial scale it will definitely look this smooth now it's the most common type of non-woven uh, fabric it's really simple to make it holds it structurally well it's easily molded into shape so you can heat it with things like steam uh, and you can mold shape so things like hats are made out of felt you might um, find coats made of felt or more sculptural pieces made of felt 
Now, most common fabrics are wool felt, but you also get felt using other fabrics. Uh, other fibres, I should say. My mistake. Thank you very much for watching. Um, and uh, please like and subscribe, as all the cool cats say. Or you can follow us on Instagram. Um, or you can do none of those things and just enjoy these videos. Thanks very much.